threading text frames together. What I mean by threading text frames is taking this text frame and having its content spill over into a second text frame. This is the stuff of page layout applications. This sort of thing really, again, is not supposed to happen in a multimedia application like this, but we have this capability using this TLF text engine, which is fantastic. So once again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and manipulate this first text frame that I have. What I wanna do, I already made him a little bit narrower in the previous exercise. I'm just gonna crush down his height, maybe around something like that. And you know, maybe what I'll do as well is I'll drop down his size just a little bit. That text is pretty big. There we go, something like that is fine. So what I'm about to show you is perfect when you have long text, lots and lots of text. That's why I went for that longer lorium ipsum sample. And I've crushed down the dimensions of this first text frame. Notice now that I have this red icon way down in the bottom right corner, and I pointed this guy out not too long ago. This icon here, if you've never seen this icon before, if you don't work with programs like Illustrator or InDesign, which is where this stuff comes from, then what this icon means is that there's more text inside this text frame than can be displayed. In other words, the text is too much for the dimensions that we have set our text frame to. So that text doesn't get deleted, it's still there, we just can't see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna single click on this icon and notice what happens to my cursor. I now get this kind of this strange looking cursor appearing here. And now what I can do is quite literally click and drag out a second text frame just like this. And what happens is we get a second text frame that is now threaded back to the original text frame, and the text that we could not see previously now spills over into the new text frame over on the right, okay? So how I think of this, by the way, is I think of water. I think of buckets of water. So the water flows from the top down. When it reaches the bottom, it spills over and continues flowing down into the next frame, all right? I hope that makes sense. Now. Notice too that the icon down in the bottom right corner is changed. We have a tiny little arrow there now. And the icon in the top left corner of the new text frame also has that arrow suggesting that these two guys are connected together, okay? Now, what can we do with this? Well, you can do a lot of cool things with your threaded text frames. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head back and grab my black arrow tool. And maybe what I'll do is I'll sort of space these guys apart just a little bit. What happens if the height on my first text frame changes? What happens to that text content? Well, again, this is why I think of my text threading as water or being fluid, because what happens is all of the text that can no longer fit inside this frame simply flows down into the second text frame. Or if this first frame is larger, then what happens is all of the text in the second text frame backfills back into the previous text frame, okay? Does that make sense? So everything here right now is dynamic. And if you've never done this before, then you might wanna spend some time getting used to the concept because it is a little strange, but you know, I've been using programs like InDesign and Illustrator for years and years, and this makes perfect sense to me because this is exactly the kind of stuff we can do inside those other graphics applications, okay? Now, let me explain one more thing here to you real quick. We have our text frames here, and of course we have the icons in the top left corner of the text frame and in the bottom right corner of the text frame. Sometimes they're empty white boxes, sometimes they're filled in with that triangle where there's a connection. The way that I think of this, I literally think of these guys as input and output jacks, you know, on like a home stereo system or a home theater system. So this guy down here is the output jack, here's my cable, and he's running to the input jack on the next available text frame. And then I have another output jack down here, but he's not connected to anything. And I have another input jack up here, but he's not connected to anything either. But what I could do is I could continue threading frames if I wanted to. And what's cool here is I can actually thread frames forwards or backwards in my text flow. Again, that idea of water, right? So in other words, what I could do is I could come along and I could click on this first text frame's input jack, just like this. There's that same icon, that same cursor we saw earlier. Click and drag out, 
Now I've created a new text frame and he's at the beginning of the text flow now. So now he's the first text frame. The formerly first text frame is now the second text frame. And the last guy, of course, is now the third text frame. So in other words, I can thread forwards with my text threading or I can thread backwards. It's really flexible and really, really easy to work with. So now this new text frame that I've created has the input and output jacks and I could thread backwards again or there's the output going to the input or I could take my last guy here, maybe what I'll do is I'll crush down his height just a little bit, grab his output jack and go and create a fourth text frame. And of course, there's a connection now made into this new text frame down in the bottom corner. So there you go. There's how you can work with threading text frames inside your Flash movies. Again, if you've never done this kind of thing before, spend some time, get comfortable with the idea, and have lots of fun.